first pick, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, we were first pick. I don't know. No, uh, it, it worked. It definitely worked. It, it was definitely working worked. for them, yeah. And they're going to have an opportunity to do it again here with the Shadow Demon, just like game number one. But big difference here. Versus the Luna. Alliance have Luna. I mean, in some ways, Shadow Demon's better. Yeah, Shadow Demon's game. not great. Sh Shadow Demon's better. Would you, do you think Shadow Demon is better versus Luna than he is versus Sven? Because it's... Oh, way better. It's two different aspects, right? Because yeah. Purge, you know, you help slow down the Sven and kite him around. It's really good, but Disruption Illusion, so yeah. really good against Luna. If you're talking about it just straight, like, those heroes paired against, like, not including, like, anything else, it's yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. like, Shadow Demon versus Luna is just, like, phew. Shadow Demon versus Sven, if you're, like, incorporating other heroes and stuff, then in some situations it might be better, but just, like, comparing those two, yeah, definitely Shadow Demon versus Luna. And, and that's just because yeah. our greatest pet peeve right now is that well, one of our greatest pet peeves is that disruption illusions are just really, really stupid. Yeah, let's just mouse over it really quickly and take a look. At 14 seconds, and they do 75%. And 75%. Got a four-second downtime. Yeah. Combine that with Soul Catcher and almost any carry. He's going to have a hard time facing up against himself. Oh, wait, no. It has a... It has a 1.5 second down. Oh, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah, because yeah, the banish cause duration, and then you get the 14 seconds, and yeah. then it's up 1.5 seconds. Yeah, so it has, like, no downtime whatsoever. Absolutely ridiculous. So, CM picked up in the first two, though. This is a bit of a surprise. This is a surprise. What, uh, I mean, is it just because it's uh, a lockdown versus the Weaver, and we're, we're happy with that for Alliance? I, there's no, I don't think there's, like, uh, any specific thing. I think maybe just because there's no real... Um, like those like safe supports that we've not stopped been seeing, like Shadow Demon, Rubik, and Ogre are pretty much the three big pairs that I guess you could say go with the Luna. Yep. So none of those, all those are out or taken. So why not Crystal Maiden? It kind of benefits in the same way. Ranged hero that uh, can help with the Luna in the in the in the lane, mm -hmm. as well as benefit with the Luna Blessing and Arcane Aura is something never to joke about. Helps out everybody, all the lanes completely. And same little bands coming out from Alliance. The Drow Ranger and the Meepo, again, not wanting to deal with the kind of cheese strategy, that aggression and lane phase dominance. And the Bat Rider and the Timbersaw banned out this time from SG. Bat Rider was not banned out the last time. I can't remember what they actually did ban out in the third, but the Timbersaw as well is also a new ban. I think it was in part because we had a Slardar for 1-2 pickup, right? So they probably did not expect uh, the offlane or the Bat Rider to be picked up because the offlane was covered, but... You have a shocked look on your face, fogged. We have not been seeing this. It's been like unpicked, unbanned uh -huh. in so many of these games. But here we go. Underlord versus Luna. This actually could be one of the best responses versus Luna because it's if you go over Atrophy Aura, 40% <laughs> damage reduction yep. versus Agility Heroes is pretty freaking strong. Yeah. And it's a really good group up hero as well, which is pretty much what SG did the last game. It kind of... Yeah, it just leads you into just getting lots of auras and just taking buildings and just running at the opponent. So this could be a really interesting pickup in order to kind of deal with the Luna. This could it's, be their idea. It's very similar to um, the Aban, right? It gives yeah, you sustain exactly. because Underlord will be able to get you a fast mech, maybe Pipe, Greaves, uh, as well as Crimson Guard, all available for an Underlord. Exactly. It's a pushing hero as well. It may not give uh, this attack speed bonus, but it naturally pushes very well. Uh, and it also gives you some cover that a band doesn't when it comes to being able to... I mean, I guess it's kind of similar. A band solo can run in really aggressively and not have to worry. Underlord, as a team, they can run in really yep. aggressively because they have that fallback of the Dark Rift. Alliance, though, are going to go for some heavy burst damage. I like the Sand King pickup. It'll be a lot harder to like the Sand King pickup when the Weaver has Lincolns, but yep. early on. Very powerful. I think it's very important that they have a lot of magic damage versus Underlord. As yep. we kind of mentioned, he negates a lot of your physical damage with that Atrophy Aura. So picking this up now, they already have Luna, CM, Sand King. That's a whole lot of magic damage. Are you done with three. Ember Spirit fourth pick if Alliance can actually get it into their hands? and just? I mean, that'll be a Vela Discord alongside a Luna who put, outputs a ton. Is that, is this, could this be a support? Maybe? I One of the two, of the, what, right? Weaver or CK, maybe? I think it's CK carry. Probably CK carry, but I got to look excited. Come on, man. <laughs> but they did? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I don't want to hamper your excitement too much, no, but okay. pretty I'll, sure that's I'll give CK my support. reason why I was thinking it's a support. Because okay. they already have so much illusion clear, right? Sure. Sand King, Luna, CM. These guys deal with the CK illusions incredibly well. Sure. So I was thinking it could potentially just be, he feels like it might have to be, but yeah, more than likely we'll be seeing the Weaver being thrown into this support position. But CK being picked up just makes me happy. I was just like, woohoo! This is a hero that I love. I love to see it. He's been getting buffs like 
non-stop, I think through every single patch, he always gets a buff, and yeah. he still sees very little gameplay. CK and Luna do have a love-hate relationship, though, right? Just because Luna's good at clearing through the illusions later on does not mean that she's good early on. Chaos Knight's illusions will actually have a lot of value versus Luna's team fight. And at the same time, it, just because she can clear illusions doesn't mean like late game, she can get, if she gets reality rifted, oh, she yeah. can get one shot in some situations. So maybe they want to pick up a defensive type support coming up for lines. Maybe even the Dazzle again. It's been working really well for them. They even been running the Dazzle Sanking pair duo uh, nonstop. It also kind of, I guess you could say, kind of counteracts the Atrophy or anyway, but they go for the Witch Doctor. He's still kind of a defensive support. He does have the Voodoo Restoration. And he's really good versus these tankier heroes, right? Helps you cut down the Underlord to size with Maledict, and mm -hmm. then you also have the Paralyzing Castle. It will be nice, nice to have against the Chaos Knight. That being said, uh, it does sort of... Witch Doctor is not the greatest versus Weaver. So if SG Esports... I'll leave this option open for you, Fogged. Thank if you. SG Thank Esports you. do go back for the core Weaver and uh, support Chaos Knight instead... Uh, that, that Witch Doctor may be feeling uh, pretty lackluster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we don't really know, but it's more than likely, yeah, carry, but... Yeah. It's still... It just makes me happy. It gives me a warm feeling inside. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> what's uh, what's the Alliance's last pick? Because I do not I see a whole like lot of lockdown here from SGE Sports. I still, um, I still like the Ember. Yeah, I still like the Ember, too. I'm thinking what else. I mean, it's... Uh, Puck, but I, I think you want something that scales a little bit better. They could Don't want to rely just on Luna. They could still go for Limp's TA, right? Um, it's not... Uh, maybe that, I don't know if they want to go for another straight-up like Agi carry versus the Underlord, and CK can do well, it. I mean, I mean, it could be good. It is one of the few heroes that... Um, that it may be a physical damage dealer, but it has so much bonus damage that it's not affected by the Atrophy Aura as much. Refraction, Meld, Strike... Ursa is another good example of that. Maybe OD. Clear the OD? CK illusions yeah. even better. They, I like that. I think it's very good. It has high base armor to deal with the Weaver. It doesn't saving really give mechanism. a crap. Yeah, saving mechanism doesn't give a crap about Atrophy Aura yep. whatsoever because you're doing pure damage with your Arcane Orb. I think that, I think that that's a pretty good, good pick, but they ban Alliance. out the Ember themselves. Yeah. Maybe it could I'm, be the I'm feeling TA it. or I'm OD, feeling I think, it. are the... Oh, we have some stats on Outworld of Hour. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I like that. Cool. Good job, production. This is dope. They're listening Win rate, to us. Seventy five percent. Oh, Jesus, seventy five percent. In damn. sixteen matches too. That's but, yeah. That's really impressive. What that's twelve out of sixteen? Yeah, yeah. Twelve out of sixteen. Math. That's a lot. Hey, NA math. Good job, yeah. buddy. We did it. Nice. <laughs> We're not as dumb as the international community says we are. I see you grinning over there, Owen. <laughs> Making your American <laughs> jokes in your head. I know you're doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> So they're ticking down. Oh, they. Uh, so, did you think Leech Commander was? Uh, they oh, did the limp tiny. limp tiny. Oh man, okay. I didn't say it this time. I said it every other game Alliance has played yeah. except for this one. Yeah, but I mean that goes to show how bad of an analyst you are. Right, it's just <laughs> awful, man. <laughs> the one game. The one game they actually pick it. I'm trying to. I. I Is okay. it good though? More magic. More magic damage. It gives sure. them more scale. Uh. I'm trying to think of. It's low armor versus a chaos. It Is low armor versus a CK. That's the and one and thing that I was thinking. But craggy, dude. <laughs> but craggy. That that craggy though. That. Hmm. That crag. Damn, craggy's done for two seconds now. But uh, it seems like SG Esports, they were on the mindset that it was definitely some sort of more tankier frontlining type hero uh, that could clear through some things. Legion Commander and, and Tiny Bull share those similarities. Man, I've actually have not really like looked at craggy since it's been changed so much. Yeah. When and? did it's twenty five percent at all levels? Yeah, and, and now it's, it just and now it's okay. It that's really the stun and armor. All right, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, gives more value to a you know early value level one if you want to because it's three armor upgrade mm -hmm. on a hero that has no armor at the beginning of the game. Yeah, like so. one one value point of Craggy yeah, actually seems really bad. cool now. Puck, uh, yeah, good thing we said Puck. Uh, we predicted it. Maybe on the other team, but well, it's a lock. We did mention that they needed lockdown, so sure. this is one that does that, and they have. Um. Yeah, but it's a single core CK now that I actually look, look really thinking yeah. about it. Single core CK into Luna, tiny sinking. But it's a single core CK with a push lineup. So that does give yeah. it a lot more viability, right? You're, you're just looking to close out the game. You're not thinking about 35 minutes plus. What does our lineup look like? I'm I'm still con I'm concerned for SG this game. Yeah. Again, uh, I really like 
overall what Alliance has. They have the only thing that I'm a little bit reluctant about is the CM and Witch Doctor supports. Yes, those two agreed. don't really scale incredibly well into later stages of the game. However, in the learn in early game, they are probably going to enable the Luna sanking and Tiny to do so much that they could probably get out of control and. I guess the other thing from the Tiny is they also it gives them another semi-form of initiation in a way once he gets that like blink and just the burst to get in the back line. Mm -hmm. So, okay. See how it all plays out and works. Uh-oh. King RD is playing a support weaver. This hero does not have a taunt. <laughs> That's pretty important. Not going to be able to play around that one. SG Esports, they are going to be running in HFN Chaos Knight. So... It is indeed not going to be a twist and turn core weaver. We're going to stick with the support for now. We'll see how that actually works out for them. SG, they're pushing aggressively into the jungle. Can they actually do an aggro try lane at all against Alliance and get a 1v1 for... No, you don't want to want that, right? Cause no, you don't want that Underlord is actually... Oh, Sand King is one of the few heroes that could beat Underlord. Yeah. So... I don't. I, I don't think that they should try that. I think maybe yeah. just eh, maybe. I thought they were gonna go for like a level one smoke. It's kind of the thing that we've seen a lot of teams do when they have shadow demon. But now everybody kind of expects it. They play in a very defensive maneuver when you are playing versus a shadow demon lineup. And we do see it's exactly what Alliance is doing. Jonas is already positioned in his tree spot top, and everyone else is sitting on a high ground or in a very de defensive position. Not even trying to go for their bottom or uh, for their jungle bounty rune. Cannon ward laid out. Is is that the same ward that they had last time? Uh, which one? The uh, SG Esports. I mean, for whatever reason, this ward is very blue, so I thought it was a kind of ward. But they're both observer wards. Well, they're on. I, I thought this. I thought this ward SG Esports used it last time too. They used the one that was here because they were on opposite. They were on the other team. Oh, that's they were right. radiant, so they put it on the aggressive side over there. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, but it does look like they are going to put the Pit Lord in a one v one versus Sand King and go for an aggro hmm. pressure. They just want to pressure this team. This team just really likes to do that. It seems. EGM yeah. gets a. D ward on a sentry, but it is a double value from the tango, although he is fully. <laughs> it's like SG Esports watched ESL1 Genting and the lesson that Digital Chaos taught us all about, you know, the Underlord and getting this 1v1. It's like they took that lesson and, and read the opposite into it. They're like, oh yeah, Underlord 1v1 against Sand King. That's great. We'll see how that works for them. If they can actually put the pressure in this bottom lane, obviously Underlord will be fine. He shouldn't die to that lane. So it's all up to this aggressive try lane to actually be successful for SG. And starting off with uh, reality rifting for CS. And oh, and it. he misses it. Because <laughs> you don't get the bonus damage anymore. Yeah, so some yeah. people do. I don't know if he's played it so much since the change, but it does throw you off a bit when you're so used to playing with bonus damage. So the minus armor, the minus one armor now on the reality rift over the bonus damage. Puck versus Tiny. How you feeling? I would say it's a Puck favorite matchup. Yeah, almost 100% of the time. However, it is a limp tiny. This is probably his most comfortable hero. And he's also a very comfortable puck, so he could know this match. He should know this match very, very, uh, know the ins and outs of it very, very well. Yeah. We'll see how it ends up getting up. He actually even gets the range creep with his avalanche, which is perfect. And he's just, he solves up. So this is great for him. Very Yodo good Safan is currently battling it out with the Underlord. Tavo is pushing his advantage while he still has it in the first couple of levels before the Caustic Finale really gets very low. Alliance are doing a pretty good job pulling right now. King RD is going to make his first real aggressive maneuver here onto Hanskin. He is being chipped away here. He's oh, losing Hanskin's a lot dead. of his armor. And pretty sure Hanskin is going to be Reality dying rift. here. The Shrine definitely helps keep him alive, but HFN is going to be able to come in. The cast doesn't actually bounce anywhere, and Hanskin is so low on armor, they just rip him apart pretty quickly. And uh, the Puck was even there making that rotation. Still, though, it may be first blood, but it was a heavy rotation by SGE Esports bringing all their heroes out of there. Tavo's going to drop pretty low here. They had the mango on Yonas and Fawn. He could have actually dove that one if he wanted to and try and get the extra burrow strike but decided against it sg meanwhile will go ahead and use their shrine as well yeah this is well, where we, we said like the S sk versus the underlord is a tough matchup this is where it starts to get hard the first like two or three levels underlord does fine once it gets to level four where he has two in caustic two in stun that's where he puts the pressure on him but he's still doing great a 14 and four to the fifth or they're completely even i actually did not expect the pit lord to do that well i mean that but the, it's going to get worse, right? Yeah. Level level 4, level 5. Especially with Sanking with uh, CM Aura. All right. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with my mouse right now, but it really wants to go to the right right direction. I, uh, if we miss something because of it, it's not my fault. 
technical difficulties. You'll be all right. King RD, caught by the Frostbite. No paralyzing cask out from Hanskin. I think they had actually gone for that, and they nuked him. They could have actually killed the Weaver. Yeah, it definitely would have been a possibility. They do have the Shadow Demon Disruption, at least for the backup of that. But, yeah, it's pretty surprising he didn't do it just saving, d holding on to that point. Bottom now. Disruption into the bugs, onto Loda. They're actually going to turn for Shadow Demon. And Loda is going to be pulled over, and they do have the two-second stun. That is easily going to be enough to pick up that one kill. HFN. Man, I really underestimated all that minus armor. Yeah, HFN being very greedy, though. Did you see that? He yeah, was waiting for the that. last hit. That's something that you... I mean, he, of course he wants it like, pretty badly because he's a CK and aggressive tri lane, so he doesn't last hit so great, and he doesn't have an enhanced uh, way to farm in the later stages on. Mm -hmm. But he could miss a kill like that. That's very risky. Yeah. But as soon as he saw the cask used and EGM using Frostbite, that's his tail to go on Loda. But yeah, it the minus armor is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I saw it. I was just like, oh, Loda's full HP. Yeah, maybe he's been disrupted and he has... Weaver bugs on it, and I was like, this is very clearly going to be a support kill, and I'm not sure if they can kill Loda, and it was actually Loda who dropped a whole lot faster than uh, the Shattered Demon, who was being gone on with all those nukes. Yeah, and glancing back at the mid lane, Limp seems to be doing just fine, just evened up. Once he gets the raindrop in his bottle, it's pretty much impossible for the Puck to put any pressure on him. Top lane. Stun, you know, pop Is he finally going to be able to get this kill? Trying to get the creeps, pop the Caustic Finale, can't quite get enough of them. And Yoda Savan actually takes a lot of shots from that tower, so that exchange doesn't actually work out for him with uh, all that damage taken in the end. So, Oh, okay. I was Tavo's wondering gonna head back. how Tavo uh, restored himself. So he bought a bottle at the side shop, and he went and picked up the bounty rune at the four-minute mark oh, in order nice. to just stay in the lane for a little bit longer. TP's home, fills up his bottle, picks up a raindrop, and now he should be just fine. He's actually doing... Dude, he's doing, oh, he's doing great. This is, I'm going to watch this lane later just to see how he really did. Did he just spam Firestorm? Just didn't really care. Yeah, it looks like I it. So. I mean, he really tried to abuse the Sand King in the first couple levels, and yeah. I think that's one way to play it. HFN having some issues here with the Paralyzing Cask is going to receive a helpful disruption. Alliance lose some of their mana, but keep their health points well intact. SG, not quite the same. HFN does have 10, now 11 Magic Wand charges to be able to fall back on, so he has plenty of mana to work with, as well as that surprise boost of HP when this fight finally does come to some sort of conclusion. Uh, maybe with the rotation of the puck? This He needs to rotate. He can't do anything in mid lane anymore. Yeah. He can't get any last hits versus Tiny's Grow with the 131 base damage. He doesn't have all three spells just yet. He needs another five mana. He now has it with that quick restoration from the raindrop. Loom Lim does have the TP. And you could see Alliance are playing... Like, they know this rotation is coming. They're playing, uh, you know, on the hard right-hand side here to stay away from the puck, who's going to, you know, try and go for this orb angle. So they know it's coming, and they're just saying, okay, Limp's ready to TP if he does make the jump. We're just going to make it as hard as possible for him. And if he never makes the jump, well, fantastic. Limp's getting free experience in mid, and the puck isn't doing anything. Very good at aggro trialing, though, SG. Like, the Luna, you'd expect this, like, triple range trialing to pretty much sustain and give the Luna free farm, but he's actually being pressured. Only 20 CS to the 30 of the Chaos Knight. What's Tavo do? What do you do now as an Underlord? I, I mean, he shouldn't leave the Sanking, right? I think you just stay. Yeah. You kind of just stay up there for a bit, and you just keep spamming it, but eventually they do need to change it up because once Luna gets six it becomes much oh harder oh dear mid lane yeah you got him limp with the double damage that punch range seems very far <laughs> after the uh, jaunt but wow limp picking up a solo kill on the puck is a tiny not something you'd really expect to happen especially when the puck has a raindrop as well to absorb the nuke damage oh he did Double damage gives him just the boost he needs. HFN is low enough that Luna is feeling a bit more comfortable coming out, but not so much. Again, that sneaky magic wand charges may be what separates life and death and maybe getting a kill for HFN. Limp is going to try and head towards... Where's he going? Seven and a half minutes in. There's no rune popping up. Yeah, he just kind of like walked down bottom and then was like, ah, never mind. JK. All right, SG, one of the big downsides this aggressive trialing is naturally going to fall behind in experience with Alliance taking advantage of the pull like this. They haven't really quite gotten the kills, uh, enough kills out of this lane, I would say, to uh, to say that it's been really worth it. Yeah, agreed. Especially with the, the Saint, like, 
you're going to feel this heavy impact of the Sand King sometime soon with his uh, very rapid blink dagger thanks to 1v1. So you really wanted to get a, a little bit more out of this tri lane. Yeah, it's pretty much just like they're going for like this type of trade-off where if the Pit Lord was off lane, he wouldn't really get anything. While if the Sand King was off lane, he probably wouldn't really get much either. So now they're just having it. So everybody's kind of farmed. Load up, threatening that Eclipse, knowing that the Puck was very likely to go for an orb jump in. Alliance mass TP, they cut Limp's TP short, realizing that SGE Sports more uh, more of a feint than anything else. And Tavo will get some free time at the top lane. Not actually going for the mech first. Yeah, going for the hood. I was Hoods. about to comment, or for the pipe uh, first. I was about to comment on that too. Do you, do you, uh, do you think he's actually going to go the full out hood? Or do you think he's just going to go... Um, or pipe, or do you think he's just gonna go hood into uh, into mech? Hanskin gonna be gone on here. Tavo takes up a lot of this damage. Unfortunately, he takes up all of it. HFN, he's gonna be plenty healthy to try and chase down load up, but they would have much rather just gotten that one kill and gotten out with uh, Tavo's life intact. But bad luck when it comes to the uh, eclipse, it seems. Yeah, it didn't hit HFN at all for the first three ones, three beams, and then he phantasms and he wasn't, you know, actually there. Yeah. And yeah. Ends up clipping, clipping King RD. The careful pit there, Lord. buddy. That's a big kill for Loda, because that's a solo pit lord. So he gets 435 gold and a lot of experience for it. Up to level seven now, uh, 700 gold as well. Definitely a much needed kill for Loda after the aggressive trying did put him down a little bit. Tavo back to bottom. What's Tavo buying? It's got uh, the. What's some? Um, okay, never mind. I was clicking on somebody else. I saw a different item, so I was very confused for a moment. Jonas walking up toward the shrine. He's a 300 gold from Blink Dagger on the Sand King, too. So he's having a, a very good game. HFN now with the stun. Three seconds. They don't have the puck oh just God. yet in range. Puck may actually just die to this combination from Limp. He did manage to barely clip the puck before he was outside of range of that avalanche. That easily could have been a kill on Jonas and Fawn if that uh, combo doesn't hit the puck. He had his full arsenal ready to go. Yeah, this is scary. Like Puck, look at Puck's net worth compared to the Tiny Man. Seventeen hundred yeah. difference already. That's insane. Limp now going for the aggressive plays already, but oh, he does miss the avalanche on Tavo, who was seemed to be aware that something was going on. Just started moving before Limp yeah. even made it there. King RD kind of just shakuching around, not really too sure what he should be doing. It seems the two supports after this aggressive trial gets broken up. HFN of course is going to farm the top lane, but the two supports on the side of SG just kind of seem a bit confused on what their heroes are supposed to do. Level 4 on both yeah. of them at the 11 minute mark. Well, if you look at Alliances, they have a level 6 CM and I think a level 4 f uh, 5 Witch Doctor. So taking a look at the experience graph just really quickly. Alliance already benefiting quite a lot in this early game. 3,000 experience and 1,500 gold for them. A lot of it comes down to these puck rotations that Alliance reading them so well. They just simply are not connecting. Uh, we're going to see another attempt here. Two man smoke oh, up. They They're going to run his limp. Oh. Somebody throw out that orb. Oh. Throw it out. Throw it out. Oh. You know the hero's around. Oh, God. ODR may be in trouble. They do manage to get the Pit of Malice onto Limp. They see him now. The bugs are on top of him, but they're missing a lot of their nukes. Tavo, he's going to receive the brunt of Limp's first attack. They don't have the CK here with them. Yeah, and Lotus ready to go with the Eclipse, too. Nice two-man burrow strike in from Yonis Safan with the freshly picked up Blink Dagger. Managed to get a dunk out from Limp as well. Two down. King RD will be the only one to escape that onslaught from Alliance. Once again, they, they seem to they read these rotations. They rotate the heroes to shore it up at the right times. And Puck is gaining no ground whatsoever. Yeah, he's starting to fall very, very far behind. Going for the Veil build to at least make up for that. Not going to go for the Blink initiation build, so... They're not going to really have a core initiator for quite a long time. Not really sure if I agree with that this game. Yeah, I'm not sure if I agree with that either. Especially, like, if you was ahead, I'm down with fail at Discord. But when you're behind like this, I feel like you absolutely need that hard initiation. Yeah, let's take a look at Limp. He's going to have his Blink Dagger any moment now. So Blink, Tiny, Blink, Sanking. They have, like, all the tools they need for the early game already. I hear Dark Rift. Oh. Down the bottom lane. Tavo's just protecting that. Loader Defiance is up on him alongside the Arcane Boots. He's doing what he can to push down these lanes, but uh, actually, did they get to the deny on the bottom tower? How do we, I don't remember this tower dying. Witch Doctor denied it. Okay. So they didn't even get the one tower bounty that should have been should have been theirs on the side of SG Esports. They do have, this is a significant upgrade, the armlet of Mordigian on the Chaos Knight. 
He'll be tanky enough to live through this combination from Lim for sure, but will he be tanky enough to live through the Crystal Maidens combo as well? They do have the successful Dire Scan, HFN. Is he going to respect that, though? He's sticking around. He's they are going to go on him. The Armlet Toggle may just be enough to keep him alive alongside the Phantasm. Does manage to get the stun out. Nicely played. Turned around. Is going to go for EGM's kill, and maybe Limp is going to be caught as well. He doesn't have poison, though, so he's not going to be able to reveal Limp, and the Blink Tagger away will get him the distance he needs to get out of there. HFN successfully... Uh, Very cocky, yeah, I have to say. I was about to say, I'm not, I'm not sure if it was like, I was going to call it a successful read, but th honestly, there was very little way for him to know that he was going to be able to survive. Jonas is in that. position. Epi channeling. 3, Ding 2, RT 1. Start a TP and there goes the epicenter already blowing up the Weaver and going to be able to get a lot of damage onto Tavo as well. He may have that Hood of Defiance, but it's not looking like it's going to be good enough. Not with the Death Ward out. A little bit of toss action. They get him bottom lane. We missed this one, though. While the action is happening at top and SG were losing everybody, Alliance did drop their Luna. HFN in his rotation uh, managed to pick up that a very important kill. Yeah, Loda was just, he was trying to claim the tower, and it was just a good rotation by HFN. The puck was already kind of on his way down there, and yeah, they net a kill with the Dream Coil combination with the CK. But nice epicenter from Jonas in that fight. Yeah, absolutely. Great double initiation, showing the power of the two blinks at the early game. Very hard to contest those. Very hard for uh, SG to really set up and try to push any tier ones now once those blinks are finished up. Oh man, did you click on the, the Weaver's build? Is very uh, peculiar. I've never seen something like that on a support Weaver, actually. What the uh, medallion three first? Three bugs. What? Oh no, 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 no! I'm down with three in bugs. No, none in Geminate. Uh, I mean that's that's a little bit iffy. I mean, I'm fine with like a. But which going are, for, like, are you done with a three one one build? Mm, no, I was thinking more. Yeah, more, yeah. I I think if you're gonna go max out bugs, which I'm cool with, I think you do need to also level Shikuchi beside yeah. it. I always, I don't think I've ever seen Lil go for that build. Yeah, I'm that's who I'm just that. using that as a template because he's kind of the one who, yeah, established it. Established it. So, but anyway, I mean, it's player preference in a way. Yeah. And uh, EGM has been so happy though. Maxed out the the Arcane Aura first, so he gets that eight self mana regen as well as enabling his team to have a crazy amount of regen for themselves as well. And he I is. like this choice from Limp. He's not even he's ignoring his talent. Because I don't, I actually yeah, don't I like the first two talents from, uh, or at least one of the talents from Tiny. Like the six strength or ten intelligence is just kind of like. I figure whatever. with the CM aura, he probably gets six strength eventually. But yeah, six strength. No, right. no rush on that one, that's for sure. Yeah, strength, damage, attack probably, speed. He doesn't yeah. need for uh, you know fourteen mana regen. I actually don't even know if you ever want to get it. It's too much mana. You never can go. You never <laughs> can do anything with. You just have way too much. Fog was playing Tiny last night. You were playing roaming tiny, right? For yeah. position, you were doing the, the toss nonsense. And he's running around with this 14 mana regen. He's like, I, I, I can't run out of mana. I'm trying to. It just doesn't work. I even got I got refresher at the end of the game with Dagon, and I couldn't even blow all my <laughs> mana. Like, you just regen so quickly. It's it's too much. Like you, It's such a ridiculous amount. At 14. Skyrath gets that at level 25. So, but, yeah. Is he really? Yeah. He, wow. Skyrath gets either minus uh, 4 second ancient seal or 14 mana regen, but... Yeah, it's a crazy amount, but in comparison to 25 attack speed is like, 25 attack speed is not that much, but either way, taking a look at what else is going on around the map, Luna is starting to catch up a little bit after he, we sped, he did get a little bit slowed down inside of the aggro tri lane, but he has gotten a couple successful eclipses off to bring him back, and he's going to have his dragon lens for those stats soon. All right, I'm not a fan of that. You can't, you can't just throw out your swarm just because. <laughs> All right, I, I'm not a fan of that. Got to keep in mind you're just giving gold to the enemy team. Yeah, thirty each. How, how many times have you like seen the bugs been thrown out and you're like, oh, I'll, ta I'll take one, yeah. sir, sir. I run into it on purpose. Please. I yeah. run into it on purpose. Yeah, you're like, oh, you know I will definitely take that. And then you farm yours. You farm some of the creeps. Yep. It's like a whole entire creep wave. I like this. What uh, alliances force are making sure that they do is stacking ancients, so they, at least they have that uh, enable to. Enhance Lotus farm in that fashion because CK can't do that. Yeah. He always just needs to kind of farm, and as a result of that, he went for a Midas, which I don't really know how I feel about it. I, I kind of like it be just because this hero doesn't have a natural method of accelerating his farm. And I think it's pretty clear that uh, SG Sports are not going to be able to snowball. Like yeah. they, they, I think the plan was for them to be able to take control of the aggro tri lane, uh, and by 15, 20 minutes, they'd be 
pressuring Alliance heavily when it comes to objectives, but that just does not yeah. seem to be possible. I like it. They're gonna they're setting up for their late game. It's a single core CK as well, so he just feels I need to get as big and as fat as possible, high high level as possible in this game. So going for that, trying to get his talents, his talent tree finished up as quick as uh, as he can is definitely key. How are you feeling about this? It is the straight out pipe from Tavo. No mech in between. He's gonna go back for the mech, sure, but. I, I really thought it was going to be Hood Mech. There's a lot of spell damage on the side of Alliance, but Alliance now. Shadow Blade up on Limp. He's going for the Shadow Demon. Cat. He's going to be able to get him too. And blink himself away ahead of the Pit of Malice. SG a bit nice too slow to be able to get the catch. 40R. Thinking about it. Doesn't actually jump forward. May still catch EGM. He's going to be frostbitten up. Loda puts himself in a position to be able to get that tower. Starts right-clicking. EGM is actually outputting a lot of damage with this ultimate because King RD is not feeling comfortable challenging that one. Limp does manage to pick up the puck. And now King RD may be caught by Yonas of Fun. Four stab forward. Burrow strike up in a second here. They got him. His damage is just so underwhelming without having any ingeminate. That's true. Like, he bent him for the medallion, and then he like he just kind of hits super slowly and doesn't do anything. Tabo now. Trying to Respect slow down the that push, Shadow but Blade, man. Bye bye. Respect that Shadow Blade. Okay. Things are starting to fall apart. They Even more so for SG than before. Yeah, we were we were talking about it between game one and two, and we said, you know, SG sports are just very likely to be tilted after that game one. Yeah, just, just a bit after throwing away such a. You know, you probably didn't. You, you probably like had hopes, but like I'm not sure how high of expectations they had for themselves. You know, and they actually proved, hey, we can beat Alliance. They just couldn't close it out. Top lane, HFN. HFN. Here comes even more pressure. They you're the super tanky and you tossed, survived man. through the last bye bye. gank, but this time around they've got two supports and a very big tiny. They do manage to get the coil onto two. Double TP's out, and there is no way to stop them. Oy. They're looking very disconnected. Not looking like they're all on the same page. Something we did mention as well before... This game started that they they do have good teamwork, but a lot they do have good teamwork in some of their games. But for the majority of the time, it seems to be one or two people a little bit disconnected from the rest of the group. Usually, it being uh, 4DR and uh, not really HFN. Usually, it's just mostly 4DR. So, and I think game one they they naturally looked a lot better than what we've seen is because just because it's a fast pass fast paced lineup, right? Yeah, it's it's uh. I think easier to be on the same page when you're just like, okay, go this tower, then this tower, then this tower, then this tower, then yep. this tower, then this tower. There's literally not much thinking to it. But here, the game's slowing down. You have to pick and choose your farming times and where Alliance is going to be going for these ganks and try and counter them. And SG Esports do not seem to have a very good grasp of uh, Alliance's timings right now. I'm not really feeling the impact of this Weaver whatsoever. Yeah. Like he's going he's going now for a Aghanim Scepter, but Or the Underlord. I mean that's uh, I guess yeah. that's the nature of an Underlord when you're not able to push. When you're not able to just group up and do your thing, yeah, yeah definitely. Not much inhibits him quite a bit. Do you agree with the fact that SG Sports have, have slowed down the game? I mean, it seems like they're almost kind of forced to, but I think that yeah, I mean they're they're forced to, but they also just don't have the opp Alliance isn't really giving them the opportunities to just gain any momentum back onto their side. Like right. the everyone on the side of Alliance is now getting pretty farm and farmy and tanky. Even the supports, twelve hundred HP on the CM with the urn and the drums. Same thing with the Hanskin. Drums as well. Wow, they really like their drums. And Jonas as well. Like Fifteen hundred, nineteen hundred, twelve hundred, sixteen hundred, like all of them are outside of like the threshold of where the puck can really cause his biggest damage. But now finally we do have 4DR picking up that blink dagger on the puck. It did take him a very long time, but very long. He's got it now with the veil. We'll see if they're able to really take anything of it. But taking a fight at a tower when you have nobody set up is impossible. So this tower tier two is going to drop for sure. TPN from Han Skin, and they are going to follow up with a few more TPs from Alliance. Not going to give the opportunity for a tower bounty. They're just going to deny that. And seems like SG Esports. Jonas knows something's up. Ooh, almost catches 4DR on the TP. Yeah, that was a five second TP by the puck. Wow. Almost gets grabbed. Look at the map. It's riddled with wards and sentries right now. Both teams. Yeah, it's kind of a crazy amount of sentries. <laughs> it really is. Look at that. One, like two, obsessive. three, four, five, six. Six in the bottom, just in that right side by Alliance, while 
uh, SG has all of theirs defensively placed in their jungle. So both teams, you can see how they are trying to play around it. Alliance trying to play mostly around the bottom right side, while SG is trying to play on the top left. But now they're trying to Alliance is starting to make that move toward that top tier two, which is the last one remaining. Yeah, they've taken the bottom tier two. Roshan also something that uh, Alliance have almost at their leisure to be able to take. They also had some vision inside of the enemy uh, jungle up here. Centaur Conqueror spots out a couple of SG esports. So BKB now finished on the CK. CK is pretty decent farm because of that Midas pickup. It's level 16 yeah. on him too. Not too shabby. He does not have great talents either. His last one is pretty absurd though. Reality Rift pierces Spell Immune or 20% cooldown reduction. Yeah, the Reality Rift one is pretty insane. Once you, s if, if they do ever build DKBs, but we don't really yeah. see people build them as often anymore, but that is actually so crazy. And the cooldown reduction is pretty good too. Like Phantasm then becomes, goes from a two minute cooldown to like 100 seconds almost. Yeah, 104 seconds. And that means it has like a 50% uptime from the Phantasm. And then Reality Rift as well also has a, like a four second or 4.5 second cooldown, which is quite nice. How's that Axe Weaver coming along? Not really. Not uh, really at all. He's been forced to go back and buy some wards so that his Shadow Demon can attempt to get anything. He's almost got an urn finished up on him at least. Urn. Almost they an need, urn. They need it. I mean, urn is a great item. It's a only sustain that they really would have on their lineup. Here we go. Smoke coming out. They're looking for something, but there is nothing to catch. The line seems to be all grouped up and aware. They are smoked as well. Surprise Tier 1 Tower. Good use of the pushing power of the CK. Will they make it there to defend? It looks like Alliance wants to contest this porting Shrine on the shrines. TP. Jonas Safan does manage to get a two-man burrow strike. Stalls things up. Now for more TPs. Uh -oh. Luna's going to be the first one in. Luna, a little bit late on that TP. Dude, does manage to get a two-man stun on the side here. BKB going to be activated. HFN is going to pop the Phantasm. Go straight for Tiny. Does manage to get the rooted in. Luna as well. Maybe they can beat him down. Luna's trying to battle it out. The physical damage is too much. He manages to actually win the fight against the Chaos Knight. And now it's just clean up. Jonas Safan hopes to be able to catch 4DR. Can't quite get him. And they also get the TP out from King RD. First what real fight that we've seen from SG Esports. And what they happened? lose it pretty dramatically. With the, with that, what happened with Puck? Where was he in this entire engagement? Did he just get. He can't have gotten just completely zoned out by a Sand King. I don't know. He used no spells in the fight. That. He had everything up. Absolutely everything. He didn't use Veil. Nothing. The CM full channeled an ultimate. Loda just stood his ground as well. Loda actually dropped to a like 800 HP. I think if the Puck was in position, they would have been able to maybe even turn that fight. But yeah. I guess Jonas just had a very good position to be able to zone him out of it with his with his Aghanim stun uh, range and having a gem in order to just... I don't know. Having a gem to claim with the vision there. But I don't know. It's That was very odd. I'm really not too sure where he, where he was. And the Weaver can't get into the fights when the CM ulti is channeling. So he was able to dish out no damage. He just threw bugs and stood there. So... It was pretty much CK and Pitlord versus the world in that situation. Because Shadow Demon died right in the beginning. Phantasm just doesn't seem to be enough. I think he got lucky, too. I think he got the extra puck. Proc. I think, yeah, yeah. He had the three uh, Phantasm illusions. Yeah. Oh, 4DR. Yeah, not too, that seemed Run very away. peculiar to me. Hiding himself in the trees for now. He's going for the Dagon next. Hanskin's going for that. Uh, Aghanim's on Witch Doctor next. That'll be a decent way to clean up the illusions even more. Oh, yeah, for sure. Is that a gem on this team? Yep. Gem on yeah, the gem on the same Yeah. EGM so. bought it for him. EGM's rich. He bought it for him, and he has medallions. And I mean, every right. single I clicked over to EGM, I just see him jungling. Yeah, he has been. He was just... Jungle, you have so jungle, jungle, jungle. 13 mana per second. Like, you might as well just, like, walk over, br frostbite a creep, frostbite, frostbite nonstop. Every time you walk by camp, always frostbite a creep. Wait, the self is more than double now? Yeah, they, they buffed it. Jesus. It's really love. It's really nice at the last level because it goes from 3 to 8. 4 to 8? No, I mean, the ally mana region is 3, and, yeah, but you, yeah. My 4 to 8. It goes oh, from 4 okay. to 8, but, like, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Instead, it, goes, it gets upgraded from double to a little bit higher. It's pretty insane. Yeah. It's quite nice. Here we go. Time to take the shrines. Butterfly finished up on Loda now too. So that Shadow Demon, if he is able to actually get the disruption on Loda, 
those illusions are going to be extremely powerful. There is that one thing going for SG, at least for the Shadow Demon. You know what I love about this is the, um, these kind of builds on Luna, just the late BKB you can get. Yeah. He actually went for 40 Lucent Beam damage instead of uh, 150 health. So. I've been seeing a lot of people actually do that, to be yeah. honest. Like, majority have been uh, going for that Lucent Beam damage. Well, that's talking about uh, 440 extra damage from your Eclipse. Yep. That's pretty good. Limp is on the hunt. He's got an Arcane Rune ready to go with the Shadow Blade. About to run into some heroes. Kind of where it gets laid uh -oh. down, but he managed to get the two-man stun. Tosses the Shadow Demon to his death into HFN. Tavo desperately trying to save HFN here with the Dark Rift, but it's going to be close. He tossed oh, him out Limp. of Oh, my God. What a play from Limp. That was sick. That was clutch. Ah, oh, Limp Tiny, man. It's been too long since we saw this majestical force. They've played it a lot in this tournament, too. We just haven't gotten the, the luxury of watching it. It's... It is incredibly yeah. good, man. This guy is probably the best tiny in the world. That was dope. It was it was respect band versus NIP versus every single yeah. lineup that Limp has actually been on. It has been respect banned several times from tier one teams in the first two, just versus this guy because he knows the ins outs, everything about this hero, how to abuse it to the maximum extent. Weaver bugs skittering around, feeding gold to Alliance. Nom nom nom. And they're just waiting for the creep wave before they actually push high ground here. Loda begins his siege. Oh, Shadow Demon's probably so happy right now. Yeah, he's, he's like, like yes. finally. And, and immediately. Alliance know how important those illusions are, so. Yoda Safan commits the Burrow Strike to be able to take him out real quickly. Urn heal up. Love that Urn does not get cancelled by towers anymore, so it doesn't matter the tower hit hit him, still keeps the urn. Ooh. You know, some fun. Second too late to be able to catch the puck. Heart is the attempted build for our Chaos Knight. Yeah, it's a long, long ways away, and they are very trapped in their base right now. A very aggressive wards coming up from Alliance just to keep the map control in their favor even more. And SG is just struggling to really find any farm. Pit Lord spamming out mid. CK is attempting to farm out bottom. Time for that 120 gold talent. Yeah, he might actually kind of have to if he want, they want to stall it out stall it out for like an infinite amount of time. But 12 stats is so nice too. Yeah, it is. Free ulti or basically a little bit better. Let's see Weaver. Deliver out. Wandering around. Not quite spotting Hanskin. Alliance grouping up. They see three people going toward the top area. Or they had seen three people going toward the top area with the ward that they do have top. And they don't see anybody just yet. They knew the puck was there, but puck gets out. The weave, they have no idea that the weaver's in the side there. Weaver's and, sticking yeah. around for that, that next creep wave. Yeah. He's uh, about halfway to the Agonims now. Yeah. So that'll be nice. I think that was an Aegis expiration sound, right? Yeah. So Luna's Aegis gets reclaimed. You know, Bugs... Don't actually come close to killing anything. No. They're on a creep wave. not very good at killing the creep wave like that. If you go into the creep wave with the weaver, though, that's when they start doing because the arm money armor starts to tick up and everything. Yeah. But yeah, just I was like, I was expecting a whole lot more when King RD had this plan to, you know, get that next creep wave. <laughs> he throws out the swarm and it, like, doesn't even bring that. I, I was thinking, like, at least half, you know. But. Yeah. Alliance is just kind of chilling out, finishing up the next few items. Hanskin's going to have Agonim's finish now, too. Almost level 18, so the Death War damage is pretty significant. 150 with the four bounces as well. And there's not really a whole different... Uh, there's not really a whole lot of ways for SG to stop the Witch Doctor channel. It's pretty much just the Puck and, like, the Shadow Demon. Yeah. Like, CK is not really going to be... Our Witch Doctor shouldn't be in the position for the CK to really get on him, so... Same goes with uh, Pit of Malice. Yeah, same thing. So, so indeed, we wait. We wait for a few more items to be delivered. And Alliance, Alliance. is just kind of chilling out for a bit. They feel very confident in this game for sure. Now BKB finished up finally from Loda. Mid lane, Limp, going for the pickoff. And they get it on the CK. HFN getting thwacked a couple times by Limp, but no spells available after they burst him, burst down the Shadow Demon. 
They toss back the CK this time, though. BKB hey. is still not popped. He's, He's getting a lot of, of malice. Done. Fortunately, that will be able to control Limp a little bit. He turns around, actually brings him down to health almost immediately. The BKB is out, though, and that Death Ward is laying into HFN alongside the Luna. He does manage to keep himself alive ever so barely. The Shrine helps out big time with that, but the Tier 3 tower is dropping low. Alliance will actually give up on it, thanks in part to some of the Minus Armor. They know the Chaos Knight will be back soon, so they don't want to risk it for a tower. They could throw away their gigantic gold lead if they try and prematurely go high ground. Yeah, you can see how much damage the CK still does do, especially to Tiny, since we've mentioned he doesn't really have the highest of armors. Now he picks up the plate mail, but he almost gets one-shotted. If all the illusions had crit, he probably would have died instantly. Nice Shiva's pickup. That'll help out a lot for tanking against the uh, Chaos Knight. Yeah. Wait, Shiva's for... Oh, Shiva's on tanking. I was like, Shiva's yeah. on tiny. So Toss confused, back. So HFN. BKB still on cooldown. He's going to get comboed down here. Half yeah. HP. Even though he's got the heart, he is very, very tanky, though. He does actually able to survive. They definitely could have killed him. They didn't commit Chaos Knight, uh, the Eclipse, two-man Burrow Strike. Another Shrine going to be popped here. Three-man Three coil. coil. This is going to be one of the better potential engagements. But again, a Chaos Knight's cooldown is just such a problem. They're going to be able to toss back another. That's going to be the Shattered. I mean, he's definitely done for. You know, Safan blinks forward pretty aggressively. They do manage to get a good Silence as well as good Pit of Malice. But ultimately, this magic damage compare pales in comparison to the Alliance it's tanky, tanky sustain. Yeah, the sustain is ridiculous just because they have the CM aura on top of uh, the... Which Doctor having the drum, so his yeah. Voodoo Restoration, is he can just have it on pretty much the entire duration of the fight and still have enough mana for all of his other spells, so that's a really nice little combination that they got there going for them. Tier 3's gone, and the real Luna Assault has begun. Here it begins, the Glaive. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Tavo taking quite a large amount of chip damage there. The BKB was popped on Loda, though. This is the yeah. safe play. You know, no risk. They don't want to drop this game for sure from a line, so as safe as possible they want to play. BKB goes on cooldown. Rose should be respawning in the next minute and a half or so. And Hanskin's got to be grabbing his level 18 now, so for that bonus ultimate damage. And yeah, Limp, go Limp went for the 25 attack speed, not the 14 mana region. <laughs> kind of expected that, but... Oh, yeah. Take a look at other do you, uh Do you do cooldown reduction or... I Avalanche. think I think you uh, yeah cooldown reduction because it affects your items. So blink, yeah. Silver Edge, BKB, stick. Too good to ignore. Yeah, way too good to ignore. It's like 500 damage on Avalanche too. Oh, he went 12 all stats on Chaos Knight. He did go 12 stats. Okay. Damn, I was I was all set on SG. You know, trying to make this game go another 30 minutes. <laughs> That's 3600 gold. That's another Reaver. In 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm sure this game is actually going to come to a head here pretty quickly. Yeah, the next There's Roche no is going to be the window is where Alliance is going to just group up and go for it because I think the Tiny should have his AC around that time too. He's actually not really farming too much, so actually probably not. But still, they will have their – once they have the Aegis online, they're going to feel much more confident. But now taking a look at King RD, he does have an Aghanims finished up, and he has a Midas in his quick buy. What the hell? On uh, King RD? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, why not? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Maybe should have done it earlier. Uh, <laughs> you said there's a problem with single core CK going late game. King RD heard you. He's like, <laughs> all right, time to make myself another core. Oh, SG Smoke has been popped. They have the high ground, but they don't have a shrine, really, and they don't have any initiation to be able to catch Alliance. 40 yard, which is a little bit too far back. Two nice man, two burrow. man burrow coming out from Jonas. They're going to actually turn try and kill the Sand King. Underneath the Pit of Malice doesn't quite have the damage. Meanwhile, HFN, he's going to pop his ultimate. Turns, actually doesn't manage to get the Reality Rift onto the real Luna. Turns for Hanskin instead. He's definitely done so. But Loda can actually pop the BKB. Now the ultimate is going to bounce around, kill all the illusions pretty easily. They have the CM ultimate going out, but it looks like the disruption stopped that one. They are going to be able to catch F HFN. He turns, tries to go and help out Limp. Nice use of the lapse. ultimate there from King RD. That actually going to help HFN potentially get the kill on Limp. But no, Limp actually gets away. Barely. It's not even the Puck Orb is going to be able to catch him. He jumps out. Limp starts getting the Urn heal. And now we are forced into buybacks. I Limp. think that this last fight was a big indicator of like, kind of everything that we've been talking about at the problems with SG. How disconnected they are. We have the CK fighting an entirely different battle in the mid lane, mm -hmm. while the rest of his team is fighting up toward the Shrine area. It's just a completely segregated fight. You can tell they're not on the same page at all. The Puck comes in super late 
to help out his CK with the coil. It was like, absolutely too late. Shadow Demon was forced to use a disruption on a CM, which is definitely not what you want to do. You want to be using that disruption on either your CK or the Luna 100% of the time. So they definitely need to just get together, and if they can fight actually as a unit, I think they can do much better, because once Hanskin died, I think that was their big window to try to really take the fight. Yeah. And unfortunately, they just remained a bit too split. It all comes from, from that retreat, right? The fact that half of them go down the ramp on the right, and the other half go up. Yep. It's just like sticking together. It's teamwork. They need the teamwork. They need to just do it better versus better teams. It's, that's what, is, uh, what's what, happen. Is, what does teamwork do for you, Fog? Makes th the dream work. Oh, that's true. Wiser words have never been said by Ben Merlini Wu. What is, uh, you get Manta next on Chaos Knight? Is that what you do? On Chaos Knight? Yeah. Yeah. Do believe so. I think Resolution was doing a different build, but I didn't get to. I didn't actually get to see. Who it, cares? ESL, that guy's already out of the else. tournament. Why but are we he, talking no, I'm about saying him? at ESL he did do one, and people were saying that this is like the new CK mm -hmm. build. But yeah, but yeah. it may be the new CK build, but yeah, he's already think, out of the tournament. So I think Manta he, he is can't, he can't so really great. be that good, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with, with Manta with the Phantasm, if he gets the Illusion proc, that's six, seven of CKs plus a Shadow Demon disruption, nine CKs. <laughs> that's a lot of CKs. That is a lot of CKs. Fortunately, Loda does have the damage to deal with it. He's got Butterfly, Manta, Satanic, Dragonlance still. Yeah, he's pretty much six-slotted. He just can sell the Dragonlance and the Dominator, pick up a last item, and then get that Moon Shard as well. He's about to get that plus 15 all stats too. Yeah, I think he can go for a secondary Butterfly after that, to be honest, because they have no MKB. No one can even build it. CK doesn't build it. Yeah. So double uh, double Butterfly will probably be his best decision after uh, after he gets rid of that Dragonlance. Pit of Malice finally wears out Loda. Comps a bit of magic damage here, but he's also returning physical damage in spades here just because SG having to deal with those bouncing glaives. Gets a bit too low, pops BKB, runs himself away from his own disruption illusions. Not willing to risk any of this for a simple melee Rax. Alliance can take this in all due time. He'll quickly heal up with the Satanic and maybe Alliance will be right back. Yeah, normally I would say, like, even since he's worth like, versus, like, Soul Catcher and Puck with a Dag and Fly with Veil, I think, like, the Scotty for some stats would be decent. But if he gets a Butterfly, he, they, don't have, they literally have no MKB hitters, and even his illusions don't have MKB, so they, he dodges, like, 90% of the Glaive attacks anyway. Yeah. So I think, it, I think it could be either one of those type of items. Maybe it's a little bit tankier if he feels like he needs it, but I think it's uh, mechanics question for you, Fog. Got to keep you on your toes. Uh-oh. Do Mist Glaive still bounce? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I just tested you. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Alliance. Now we're going to see the Misclaves not bounce, right? <laughs> <laughs> Round number two of the high ground push from Loda. Pops his BKB. Limp also on the front lines here. It goes for Cat. King RT actually uses the time lapse there to be able to save him. They have an opportunity for disruption. Loda's the target. They're going to be able to kill him, but it looks like this Death Ward, it's actually doing a ton of damage. HFN, he's not respecting it. He's staying in it and fighting, but now he needs the help from his support. Cat is going to die, giving up his life to be able to save that Chaos Knight. He tries to get back to the fountain, but he can't even make it. He's going to go lift. down still as oh, Jonas Afan no. catches him with the Burrow Strike Epicenter. No it cost them Luna. But it is well worth that Alliance do manage to pick up this whole entire lane of Rax, take out SG Esports, who do not have buyback on many of their heroes, and will be able to take a second lane, it looks like. Maybe even the full thing. Maybe even the full thing, yeah. yeah. With the sustain from the Voodoo Restoration, the Pit Lord is not able to deter them from doing this, so this should be Mega Creeps coming out for Alliance, and GG it should be coming out shortly from SG. SG Esports, they looked so good in the first 20 minutes of game number one of this series, but it has only gotten progressively worse for them. Game one, not able to close that one out. Game two started off a bit of a shambles. And they never really had a good grasp on this game. They're going to try and do something now without some of their cores. They're finally coming up now, Limp. He's going to back himself away, unable to get that last melee. Rax, a nice four-man nice four coil. coil. They're going to be able to pick up a couple heroes here. Limp's going to be one of them. He ends up going down, losing that Aegis. They're going to be able to pull out the supports as well. Big question is, can they kill Limp twice? Already locked inside the Pit of Malice. Pops his BKB, trying to get that blink up. Almost has it. Gets an avalanche right in front of his face, and a blink away. He's out. That kill, all important there. 
for SG. If they could have killed him, that big time bounty could have been grabbed. Maybe they could have forced a buyback or something, but it's just not going to happen, sadly. Yeah. Nice little spell usage there by 40R. They get, he probably gets a very nice dream goal combo, but it's very late in the game to be seeing that. Uh, he's gotten a few, but not as many as you'd really like him to s like to see him get in what they really need. They need him to be that very commanding force in these fights because they don't really have the support coming out from the from their supports. The supports just are very weak mm -hmm. in this game. Like, like I've been mentioning, the Weaver is extremely underwhelming. He has his Midas now at the 40-something minute marks. So at least there's that, I guess, but... Uh, the melee racks is defended, and they don't they don't have megas just yet, but they are fighting against a. Let's take a look. I, I'm scared to do this right now, but let's look at the net worth. Oh god, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Uh that's actually really terrifying. SG have a chance. That's all you need to know. It's for, dude. That's it's what it's forty thousand. <laughs> you said don't look. Forty five thousand net worth. You, you said don't look. Oh, forty. You told me not to watch the horror movie, and then you read me a horror novel. Come on, Yannis. I'm sorry, dude. Jesus. Forty there forty thousand. Forty thousand. Sorry. That there is it is, and it's all its gory details. The gigantic lead by Alliance. Yeah, Loda is absolutely massive. Moonshard eaten. He nom, fi nom, just nom. finishes up the Hurricane Pike up for now, so not really wanted to fin get a, another. Doesn't didn't have the gold actually for another like really big one after he finishes the Moonshard anyway. So yeah, and Hurricane Pike's fine to get. Him, he has to like, getting the distance away from the CK is quite nice. Yeah, get away from even if you don't hit the real CK, get away from those uh, illusions after he reality rifts you. Yeah, precisely. That seems pretty good, especially since he could have the level 25. Uh, well, I guess if you have BKB activated, you don't push yourself, right? Yeah. So it wouldn't really matter that 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 situation I had in my head, but still. No problem. Tiny now does take the cooldown reduction as expected. Six second cooldown on Blink with Arcane Rune. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Good old Arcane Rune Courier. It wants to go out. It wants to go buy something. What does it want to buy? I actually don't know what it wants to buy. Well, it's not any of Chaos just Knight's items. It's not any pucks. I think it might be the plate mail for Pitlord. I yeah, don't know, actually. That's got to be it. Not too sure. Maybe it was I mean, he's click. probably thinking, like, who cares if I have buyback? Nobody. Yeah. Nobody's like, look out for that Underlord buyback. Coming in with another firestorm at 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't pick up anything. The courier, I guess it must have been just either a misclick or something along those lines. But Or maybe he decided. Oh, it's because he decided to go not for Shiva's. He's going for Scythe. Ah, uh, okay. That's why. That, that he makes changed sense. his item build. HFN. No, feeling the pressure, obviously, because they are almost at the end of this game. It's going to be closed out soon. He sells his Midas. Picks up. His Manta style, and even a casual Gloves of Haste, absolutely no yeah. buyback, nothing. Just committing all of his gold. Chiffen. They might just be able to catch him here. They have the disruption, ready to go. You could see Cat sitting really far back, because he's like, no, no, you're fine, you're fine. I need to make sure I don't get caught trying to save you. And that's exactly what uh, someone like Limp is looking to be able to do. HFN, don't poke your head out just yet. Get that heart reaching. Get going. that heart. Yeah, yeah. Limp's gonna pop forward here, hoping to be able to finish off the melee racks. Tosses the enemy back into his allies. HFN trying to come forward here, but he's just getting combo stunned up. Finally, they do manage to get a four-second stun onto Yonos and Fawn, but Chaos Knight has been scythe advised up, so he couldn't get the immediate damage onto Yonos and Fawn. Finally, they do get onto him now. Pops a BKB. Yonos and Fawn burrow strike and gets out. No, the Chaos Bolt finishes him off. Now they jump forward. HFN. He managed to dodge most of that with the Phantasm, but he just won't last long. Fortunately, they do get the time lapse back down the cliff. Jump forward. Load of Fully commits over this clip. They're going to try and go for the Dark Rift out, but they can't get it out in time. Limp, he beats them to a pulp, and that surely has to be the end GG of we'll SG yeah. Esports tale here at WESG. They put up a good fight. They made it through their group. They made it for past their first series of the playoffs, but when match